Full on Omegas is my favorite game of all time. While I'm not blinded to its faults, I often find myself finding true happiness within the world the developers made in two short years. The NPCs seem to have feelings, your choices impact everyone around you, and you can kill almost everything. Who doesn't like a good bit of violence now and again? But what if you were to take those first two and throw them out of a 69 story building? What if you made New Vegas nothing but a murder fest? Could you even make it out sane? Can you beat Fallout New Vegas Dust without going insane? If you are unfamiliar with Dust, join the party. This run will be done blind. Before this video, I hadn't touched this overhaul because in the past I had stuck with largely vanilla gameplay. That changes today. Without further ado, let's get to it. I named my character Faith as I would need it if even half of what I've heard about the difficulty of Dust is true before selecting my special stats. A high endurance and intelligence build was what I felt like would keep me adaptable to the harsh world. Tag skills selected were medicine, sneak, and survival. I had no clue what weapons I was going to have access to for this playthrough, so focusing on defense was the best offense. Logan's loophole and skilled like most runs would have been the best choice, but I opted not to go with Logan's loophole for the added challenge that revolves around addiction. The start of this mod is a series of doors that allows you to select your starting location, but before that, we need to own up to the kind of people that we are. With the innumerable amount of sins we've committed on the Discord server, check it out by the way, we needed to pay a serious toll if we were going to get our rainbow bed sheets for Christmas. By dumping all of our pack items, we are essentially going into this how I sleep. Naked. Spawning in a room that looks like a child abductor's home, I look around for anything useful. Most notable are a 9mm revolver with two bullets. Yes, you heard me right. A makeshift scythe, and a crafting kit. After playing this mod for some time, I came to find out that there are several new crafting recipes that can drastically improve your chances at surviving in this new environment. Speaking about the environment, going outside reveals an even more orange version of Vegas that we've come to love. Dust lingers around like my dad at the grocery store, but that won't stop us from becoming somewhat successful members of the community. Let's see where we're at. Oh, piss on an ant's mount. We're in the northeast portion of the map, cannily home to Deathclaws, Cazadors, and squirrels doing superhero poses. I wouldn't think that this would be the best place to spawn, but that is nothing that a little crawling around on my hands and knees won't fix. Pet play anyone? I did find some Cazadors, so at least my knowledge of Vegas isn't completely thrown out the window. Yet. Well, isn't that foreshadowing. Running right along, I find myself outside the Bitter Springs Recreation Office. Before we step inside, I do want to edge y'all just a minute. If you aren't familiar with the channel, we'd like things a little more wrecked than some folks. So for this run, we'll be playing on very hard and hardcore. This is literally not recommended by the mod author, so everything should be just fine. Let's get back to it, shall we? Stepping inside, we run into our first obstacle resolved by violence. While I don't get hit by the ghost from the skills received from the Dead Money LC, I quickly realize that my durability isn't great and decide to reload for another attempt. This becomes a frequent occurrence, so don't be too surprised. After breaking my only melee weapon and punching a dude a few times, I loot a little bit and get a few new weapons allowing me to take out the last one with a little bit of patience. I really do want this first interaction with enemies to be as long as possible for you guys, just so you know how much pain I suffered during this run and how much I love you. After reading an inspirational message that I will certainly pass down to my genetically mutated children, I jerk off a water fountain a little too much and step outside. I spent much of my time in the dust, crawling everywhere in fear. I'll be cutting most of that out, including the times that I walked really far, only to have to walk it again. Down by the bay, we find our first human. At first I was hesitant, but after referring to our best friend for this run, Bats, I walked up to the survivor with all of the confidence of a man who's been in chastity for all of October. Couldn't be me, to be honest. After having a conversation more dynamic than my conversations with most women, I loaded some bodies and lured the nearby Cazadors over to kill him. It's only murder in the wasteland if you do it with a sounding rod, so we're innocent so far. In an attempt to escape the flying devils on my rear, I jumped down the mountain and managed to find out that someone put a little extra spice in the water. I'm not going to cover all the deaths that I have in this run, but just know that I'm glad that this isn't Mario because I would have used up at least 20 lives in the bed of this river. I got to the crashed B29 and then saw a crate that looked like it would have some good loot in it, but it turns out that of course it's locked. You can even see how frustrated I am by this unfortunate news. Zetas, this video should really be paradise for you. After recreating several scenes straight out of the movie series Tremors, I find a helmet and an anti-material rifle. Unfortunately, due to the weight limit I have to leave it behind, but at least we look really pretty now. I find at least a dozen traps in the valley surrounding a bag, so I make sure to plop a hard save down and dance my way over. There really are a lot of cool notes that this mod adds that really make Vegas feel so different. After blowing up a few times trying to get out of the death trap, I found some ammo next to several NCR bodies. As someone who usually sides with the NCR, this kind of broke me. The world of dust takes place 20 years after the events of New Vegas. Factions have fallen to pieces. Resources are scarce. And people are so desperate that they throw on tights and fuck any pumpkin that they see. Stop it. Get some help. Happy Halloween, by the way. After roughly five minutes of vibrating my way through the train, I end up on a run a hill fighting ghouls with a bear trap fist. 
Realizing that the battle was lost before it began, I reloaded a save and pushed up a road that was overlooked by a tower. Finding some distracted hostile survivors, I take them out with some of the throwing spears from the ghost. I note in my journal that killing things with spears seems to do the trick while I loot the camp, netting myself a backpack and a bedroll. Pushing up the mountain a little bit, I managed to put a few dogs out with some well-placed shots. It seems like stealth, headshots, and lube were the only way that we're going to be able to survive this particular orgy of death, but being able to make splints and bandages should help us out a lot. Over at the nearby train station, I take out a ghost harvester by dancing around him like me with the questions relating to my sexuality. I'm really not sure at this point, folks. Popping inside the train station, I kill a few scorpions that are trying to audition for a role in a movie about trees and manage to find a few non-alcoholic beverages. Once outside, I look at the rubble that is Boulder City and decide that we should check it out for supplies and to see if there are any survivors. A delusion that I carry with me a little too long. You see in the base game, there are shops and people to give out quests littered all over the wasteland. As you can see by my montage of dying by these ghosts, that is no longer the case. Another great thing about this mod is that it essentially gets rid of the compass. In order to know if anything is around you, they often have to shoot at you first. Another positive is that they all tend to have accuracy greater than the one time in high school that I managed to sink a half board shot in front of the whole school. Yes, I am still riding that high. After giving a survivor a new pleasure hole with the sharp end of a spear, I loot his body, grabbing Lucky in a note. The note suggested to me that there might be something near searchlight, like a settlement or a way out, so I made that priority number one for now. I found a kind looking woman and decided that she should live due to her kindness. This decision will reflect the entire ideology of karma. Inside the fuel station I find some ammo and some food, but not too much worth of discussion. One thing that hasn't changed much is the incessant need for raiders to hide behind billboards. Since we are coming from the opposite direction that the original story of Vegas takes place, they look about as stupid as my grandpa did when he pulled down his pants for pull the pen on the donkey. He was charged for animal cruelty and fortunately not bestiality. It turns out that the young woman running the carnival game messed around with the donkey too in a similar capacity and could empathize with Gramps. While I was telling that family friendly story, I died several times trying to figure out how to kill these guys for their gear. Throwing a spear, I ran away hoping to get back into stealth. Fortunately for us, the woman that we found earlier joined my side in battle and took them out with her infinite supply of ammo. I don't understand how enemies can fire forever, but we only ever get a few bullets on their corpses. As someone who loves guns a great deal, it's a shame that we have to be so careful with our ammo. At Gibson Scrapyard, I kill a few dogs with a combination of throwing spears and guns allowing me to level up. Leveling works a little bit differently in Dust. You have access to a lot of perks at the start, but they resemble traits in that they have positive and negative effects. Not really knowing the best avenue, I increase my melee weapons and grab the Cloud Killer perk, as it doesn't seem to have a negative. Inside, I do manage to kill another dog and a woman with some sniper-like accuracy and a mix of armaments. On her body I find Big Boomer, some food, and a settlement flyer. Reading the note, I find everything that I'm looking for. Food, water, and guns. New Vegas sewers added to the same list with Searchlight. I haven't touched much on the food and water up to this point, but just know that I'm doing okay on supplies and hate having this small of an inventory. Outside I kill a dog and find some more supplies out back, most notably purified water. While trying to sleep in my bedroll, a hunter spawned and tried to murder me, but Vats and Big Boomer took care of the problem. Feeling pretty comfortable at this point, I make my way to Helios in hopes of trading with ANCR for some extra ammo. As it turns out, it's overrun with cannibals. I quickly became disappointed and heartbroken seeing some of my favorite areas in the game has nothing more than bandit camps. Regardless, I was able to put down the three flush consumers and their dog with Lucky and a little bit of melee action. I walked inside almost immediately to be killed a dozen or so times before realizing that I wasn't as comfortable as I thought. This was another frequent issue that I had with Dust. You feel like you're getting somewhere only to lose it all. Heading in the direction of Novak, I kill a hostile survivor from stealth and steal their stuff from an eyeball. At least Vegas hasn't lost all of its charm. Inside this building, I do find a friend, some alcohol and some drugs, but nothing too crazy. Remember that friend that I just mentioned? Yeah, well it turns out that she has a bunch of ammo on her, so I kill her in cold blood and take her stuff. Did I feel morally wrong by doing this? Yes. Will it help me survive? Also yes. Alright peeps, you've seen me suffer in it a lot already and have a good feeling of what this run entails. Let's pump it into high gear for a bit. I stab a dude to death with my ball trimmer, find out that Novak is overrun by cannibals like most other locations in the Mojave, sneak past Ranger Station Charlie and a few billboard bandits, find a cave with some Night Stalkers and immediately nope the fuck out, loot a bunch of stuff, find the people who sit in corners during parties, got a little bit too much pleasure from the non-consensual experience, kill the dude just so I could drink out of his toilet, somehow managed to kill all the scorpions in this cage with only one landmine without killing myself, Found a note that told me that I could head towards the Divide to escape the Mojave. Lured several of the tribals out of Novak, slowly dispatching them one by one. Grabbed repair, survival, and burdened a bear upon reaching level 3. Learned that the Legion was destroyed via a note. Found a huge backpack after looting the houses for approximately 30 minutes. 
Killed a random dude while hunting last. Killed an ant who looked at me funny. Ran past some Night Stalkers and made it to the Vine. Meaning that yes, you can beat Fall into Vegas Dust without going insane. Let's see what civilization actually looks like. Wait, inaccessible? A note. Change of plans. The divide is blocked off. Passageway design. Are you kidding me? That is literally on the other side of the map. While I don't have my actual reaction because I'm a bottom and don't verbally react to getting penetrated, I really thought that I was going to be done here and that I could go on my merry way after getting through the divide. This moment is when I realized that dust doesn't pull any punches. It's not meant to be enjoyed. It's not meant to be fun. It's meant to test your level of perseverance. Putting away my erection, I make it out of the divide. If you recall, there are night stalkers right outside and I do the same thing as before and run away with my meat tucked between my legs. After eating some breakfast and looking at the map, I realize just how far I need to go. Well, this should be fun. I do make a quick stop at Prim just to deal with a few stragglers on the west side of town. This does net me some ammo and a few medical supplies, which is always appreciated. With my ball gag in place to hide all my screams, I take out the last guy and head towards Good Springs to see what remains of Doc Mitchell's sex toy collection. I did have to deal with our first tunneler, just outside, but fortunately it was only one and I had a lot of chastity keys to be shot. Finally making it to Good Springs, I kill a few wild dogs in a cluster truck of explosions and bullets. Dogs have a lot of hides and meat, so I'm sure to collect all that I can carry for medical supplies and food. What in the Oregon Trail is happening here? People hanging out of the roof and a lot of dead bodies. Looking at the note found on one of the corpses, we find a journal that essentially says that a plague grabbed Good Springs by the balls and smacked around the mask. As sweat pooled up on my bearded face, I ran to the prospector, killed a dog, and found that my menu was glitched and that I couldn't see anything. After reload, I break into the computer and by association in the safe on the floor for some ammo and alcohol. In chats, I grab a few more supplies near a bunch of dead bodies before killing some dogs outside and leveling up. Now at level 4 with a decent amount of ammo, I put points into guns and grab the revolver training perk. Nobody was home in Mitchell's house, so I took all the resources inside, namely several medical supplies like stem packs and a doctor's bag. The front door didn't work for whatever reason, so I used one of the other holes before going to school. This area alone trashes most of my gear and cost me an arm and three weeks in chastity, but the super stem pack and the stealth boy inside of the safe are worthy enough for me not to reload a save. The cemetery had a strange man digging to China with a note, stranger than my scripts. See guys, I am not too crazy. The graves did have some ammo in them, which was great, but inside one of the houses, I found something crazy. 100 LR rounds. I'm pretty sure that this is a bug or an oversight, but I literally gave no chickens. I did kill a few more dogs and looted the rest of the houses, including Victor's old place and the gas station, but we don't have to worry about all that. Needing to get to north of Vegas, I take the shortcut through Hidden Valley. It's overrun by ghouls, so I don't spend too much time here to try to conserve ammo. Instead of going through Black Mountain, I use the stealth boy we got a moment ago to get through the Deathclaw territory. That, of course, was plan B because plan A didn't work out so well. I spent a lot of time walking endlessly to get to the sewers for some ammo. Even if I got to Zion, I'd still have to make it to the Grand Staircase, according to the note. I did stop near the southeast of Camp McCarran to painstakingly get some experience. While you guys watch me suffer, I'd like to tell you about the time that my ex and I got caught by a mailman. It was a beautiful spring day, maybe a little chilly, especially because of how short my skirt was, and my girlfriend at the time wanted to do that thing that she likes. So I bent over the living room couch in my blue plaid skirt and cage and let her do what she wanted to me. My ball of skin was just rocking back and forth when all of a sudden there was a knock at the door. Of course, the moment of excitement caused me to reach all of the tower that we had set up, so she laughed at me and went to the door with her black strap on and latex bikini so she can embarrass me. I threw a blanket on my lap, one of those with custom pictures on it. My parents gave it to me to remember my dead dog, but that's besides the point. Harold from the post office stood at the door. Harold, being the old guy that he is, a look of disgust forms on his face as he presents the sheet for my girlfriend to sign. On the bright side, I got a smaller cage and we managed to clear out a couple tribals, ants, and NCR members. Now there are several entrances to the sewers in the base game. The one that we are closest to, if I recall correctly, which I did because I'm from the future, is just outside the gate that allows entry to the giant wall off the right. Using way too many rounds, I managed to kill some ghouls before getting closer to the door. Now it turns out that the gate is actually blocked off, but we can still pop into the manhole if we wanted to. Which of course we do because there are way too many ghouls to handle without stealth. After the game crash, we made it to the sewers. Immediately disarming a few rocks more explosive than my car after its engine caught on fire, I see several NCR bodies and a mix of weapons. I'll pop on the game audio here for a second just so you can see how terrifying the ghosts actually sound in this situation. At first, I tried fighting the ghosts, but after a while I just ran. I was hoping to find the settlement almost right away, but managed to find everything but. Several cannibals lingered around the cave, so I spent several minutes playing with them. 
I also found a note that says that the NCR is falling to pieces after a rebellion. When I wasn't fast enough to get away, the ghost just knocked me down and killed me after several seconds, making the whole experience pretty pleasurable to say the least. At one point, I found a sewer key and an exit, but when I tried it, it didn't work. Reading the note we find on a mutilated corpse reveals that someone lied to this poor person and gave them the wrong key. I quickly realized at this point that I was trapped down here unless I got this key at whatever this monument was that I kept reading about. If you like dying over and over again and having to have perfect accuracy, you'll absolutely love this place. You'll still probably starve to death, but that's okay. Another thing that didn't help me was all the game crashes. Believe it or not, but my base game hardly ever crashes or has game breaking bugs. It's only ever when I play modded versions that everything falls to pieces. Food was scarce down here, and several times I almost scrapped this run to become a cannibal. Another problem that I had to contend with, this was not as much of the mod's fault, was radiation. Because my only source of radiation was the irradiated water found in much of the sewer, it was tricky staying hydrated. After being thrown around by more ghosts, I said screw it and headed back to the ladder that we entered from. For whatever reason, don't worry, I figured it out eventually, the ladders were broken and prevented me from leaving. I was really tempted to reload a save at this point, but the idea of the monument stuck in my mind and I knew that I wasn't going to be satisfied if I couldn't find my way out of this mess that I got myself into. After killing a few more cannibals, I put points in a sneak and grabbed the sound of mine perk, allowing me some extra health at the cost of resetting my sanity. This would cut things a little closer for me if I wanted to stay sane. The sewers are a maze not to be trifled with. Cannibals, radiation, and starvation all lingered around like my farts after having some greasy pizza, but I kept telling myself that I could get through it. I died so many times due to this mod's insane critical hit and damage rescaling. Pay attention to the bottom left hand corner as it really shows how bad things got for me throughout this area. It's a lot like lights on a dashboard and I have never had so many lights red before without being able to do anything about it. I like to take the time while I'm murdering my way through the sewers to tell you a story from my personal life about persistence. When I was in grade school, I couldn't have been much more than 7. We would go out to the playground for recess. It's usually a fond memory for most as you get to see your friends and talk about things you like. Don't worry folks, we're keeping this one PG. One day during recess, I was out by this great big tree, one that overlooked the school and felt like something straight from a fairy tale. It was beautiful. Down by the base of this tree, a little further than the muddled loops of roots, was a chip that didn't match the surrounding dirt. With the dexterous hands of an entrepreneurial archaeologist, I brushed away the dirt and revealed a part of a rock. There was nothing special about this rock. It was tan with slightly rounded textures and a few sharp points. Curiosity drew me to this rock. What lies beneath? Surely no different than what lies above, right? So I started digging. I gathered sticks from fallen branches from the trees and used them to pierce the hard soil. Had I had the correct tools and the strength to wield them, it would have been a breeze. But I had no access to such resources and instead worked tirelessly to remove it from the ground as Excalibur was. This was the task that took two weeks. My nails grew filthy and chipped. Others came and went to see my struggle, but few stayed. Persistence is often overlooked by admirers who have not persisted themselves. But one day, after that struggle, I felt the rock shift and began digging furiously. Eventually, I held it in my hands as Arthur did with his sword. Though it was not mine to keep and it remained to the base of that tree to this day, those two weeks taught me persistence. I hope that this story lets you learn a little bit about me, but also makes you think about the time in your life when you've persisted against all odds. Perhaps you have no rock as I have, but perhaps you have lost a family member, your identity, or have a disorder that inhibits your daily life. Whatever it is, know too that you can persist. After finding the key in the safe at the bottom of the monument and making my way back to the surface, I had hoped that the challenges would stop and that life would go back to normal. Rex would lick my bloodied hands and Boone would tell me a story. But that hope was a delusion. I sprinted towards the nearby motel as bullets followed my every move. After cornering myself in a room and dealing with all the cannibals, I finally get outside. I like to be honest with you all, so here are some numbers. The timeline when we first fell down the ladder was 4 hours and 35 minutes. I discovered North Vegas Square at 8 hours and 4 minutes. And that is only the footage that I recorded. That's close to 4 hours of walking around in a maze full of death. This was hell. Lonesome Road at level 1 was easier and that took twice as long. After prostrating myself and regaining my composure after that rant, I leveled up allowing me to increase my survival and grab the irradiated beauty perk. All of those rads that I had collected in the sewer weren't going to cause an instant death any time a ghoul would attack. Walking through the darkness after being born in it, I find myself at the northern passage. This is it. I killed the two people inside with the rage of a sexually deprived man and read the note on one of their corpses and saw that they had locked the door and hid the key to avoid this windy character. I looked around for a few minutes for this key to no avail, but then remembered the grave outside. The only problem? I didn't have a goddamn shovel. The one thing standing in my way to freedom is a shovel. 
This is just about as bad as the time that T-Dog dropped the key in The Walking Dead. Holding my head up high, I was going to escape the hellhole that is the Mojave. There is one other avenue that we haven't explored. Searchlight. Earlier we received a note that mentioned something about Searchlight having a camp. New objective received. On the way there, I stopped in at the New Vegas Medical Clinic for, well, medical supplies. I managed to kill them all after several attempts, only for a deathclaw to be right outside and murder me anyways. I guess that's karma. Reloading a save, I decide to head west of Vegas instead and murder some rather dapper folks that have managed to live through the apocalypse despite their terrible ideas to raid the Strip. On the way south, I found a few people who took circumcision a little too far, so I ended their bloodline before rolling into the Monte Carlo Suites. I cleared out most of it, allowing me to get a lot of food, but found a locked room that had four people behind it. Short on ammo, I left the door locked and went on my way. At the 188 trading post, I stole some alcohol while watching a paladin fight for their lives. On the way south, I killed a lovely couple, preventing them from being able to reproduce, and visited the town of Novak, and went on a murder spree so long that I have time to talk about today's non-sponsor sponsor, Ranch. Ranch dressing looks a lot like male sperm, and if you know me at all, you know that I love that stuff. Before you ask the question you want to ask, just know that the answer is yes. That concludes today's non-sponsored sponsor, and now back to the video. I did set up somewhat of a base here due to how centrally located it was and the copious amounts of toilet water. Jumping past Pishwash Goli, I visit a camp of wonderful tribals and manage to get all their numbers for an orgy. Rather than relying on spotty internet connection and cat ears to get everyone off, I use my bladed gauntlet to allow the creation of more holes. At the raided farmstead that I know is an ambush due to my many hours of playing Vegas, I grab what's in the duffel and get to Searchlight. I quickly find that Searchlight is overrun by the Brotherhood, so I follow the gate outside the airport in an attempt to see what Cottonwood Cove looks like. The longer I looked at the flight control tower, the more curious I got as to whether or not that there was a settlement in it or nearby. Walking into the underground passageway, I really started to think that I'd reached safety for some reason. Just a little bit further, I kept telling myself. There was one really big problem in the way. There was at least a dozen giant rad scorpions between me and that tower. It took me 20 minutes or so to kill a few of them with a mind-numbing amount of animatum and enough critical hits to kill a death call sex drive for at least 48 hours. At this point, I was just curious to see if there was anything to this or if I was just wasting my time. I ran around the airport with my sphincters clenched in anticipation before getting to the plane next to the crafting table. With the right know-how and some working parts, it looks like it could be fixed up. When I tell you I climaxed then and there, well, you get how excited I was. I was going to get out of this hellhole once and for all. First I just needed to kill some thick boys. Using every melee weapon I had and most of my ammo, I managed to kill enough of them to get to the plane and loot the body. It turns out that they had already been trying to fix the plane, but that the rad scorpions got the better of them. All we needed was some flamer fuel, scrap metal, scrap electronics, central modules, and a conductor. Upon reading the notes, I remembered all the materials across from the sign of Novak. With hope bursting at the seams at this point, I drank some more water from the toilet and started shopping. It turns out that Novak actually has everything you need for the plane aside from flame refuel. Knowing that random enemies have a chance to drop some, I go on a murder spree in an attempt to get lucky to find enough. The first group gets a few spears thrown at them in delicate fashion, but unfortunately nobody had a flamer. I ended up looking in random places as well to try to find some, but I know that enemies occasionally drop some, so that was my main focus. Approaching Cottonwood Cove, I used my last bit of ammunition and a few melee weapons to take them down. At level 7 I had grabbed the rad child perk, so I was able to take any amount of beating that I would receive. I am too distraught to stay any in your windows, but just know that I am thinking of them. At one point I was set on fire and killed immediately, but I knew right then and there that I was going to get to safety. I killed a few more people, grabbed the fuel I needed, and made my way back to the plane. For some reason it didn't work, and I was really confused so I just kind of started clicking everything. Going for another attempt, I looked at the workbench to find out that I need 75 repair skill in order to repair the plane. After getting this far, I really felt like quitting. I would need to level up a whole level if I was going to get out of the desert. After realizing that I was in deeper than V-Rush was into my rectum, I grabbed my cage and set off into the waste. I wasn't backing down now. Gaining XP and dust is slow and tedious, requiring a lot of murder. Let's get a montage going. I went to church, killed some boys harder than the Man of Steel, killed the rest of the slaves and slavers at what remains of Cottonwood Cove, found the entrance to the fort only to die and walk the 15 minutes trek back, hunted tunnelers with a sledgehammer because I was willing to die to succeed, murdered a few ghouls at the irradiated camp, revisited my old pals at the tribal camp, saw the most adorable dinosaur for the fourth time in this video, my knees are getting hella tired at this point, drank some more toilet water, killed the brahmin that I spared earlier in this run, murdered a bunch of people at Helios, cleared out Ranger Station Charlie, and reached level 8 with the help of a sniper rifle and some steady. 
I put points into repair and grab the perk Tag to select repair as my fourth tag skill. Hobbling my way back to the airport, running past the rad scorpions, double checking my sanity, popping a repair skill book, and crafting the parts allows me to repair the plane and reach a settlement proving that yes, you can beat Fallout into Vegas Dust on very hard and hardcore without losing your sanity. This was by far the hardest and longest run that I have ever done. It was miserable from the beginning to the end, Alpha and Omega. There appeared to be several endings to this mod that I would be interested in coming back to and playing as an insane person, so if you want to see me suffer a little bit more with more experience, let me know in the comments below. I am not happy with this mod if you can't tell. It makes the game unbearably hard, removes all of my favorite places and NPCs, and doesn't have any quests. To say that I hate it, however, would be incorrect. This is a buggy hot mess, but I truly believe that it achieved what it set out to do. It instills hopelessness in a sense that you are just some random survivor trying to make do. You aren't the main character. You don't have a destiny. I would love to give a formal review of Dust at some point, but feel that it would be better to wait until I've played it while being insane and experiencing another ending. With all that being said, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider turning that like button as blue as my gonads. Have a good one.